Alternative Method of Normalization, IBIT Grade 12. Foreign Key. This is another definition you need to know. A foreign key is a field in one table that is a primary key in another table. So it is just a normal field in the first table or in the one table, but it's a primary key in the other table. Relationships. There are three types of relationships in databases. A one-to-one -one relationship. For example, in our school and in most schools, each student is allocated to a register class. Each register class is one teacher in charge of the admin for that class. And the relationship between the register class and the teacher is one-to-one. -one. So you can check each student or each class is it's one class to one teacher. One registered teacher cannot handle two classes. A one-to-many relationship. This is an example is the relationship between the houses, a house at the school and its students. So you get one house to many students. You need to test that the relationship is not many to many by trying the statement the other way around. So if we say, can one student belong to many houses, which would make it a many to many, no, it cannot, they cannot. A many to many relationship. In a hospital, there are many doctors and many patients. One doctor can see many patients, but the hospital can have many doctors and one patient can be seen by many doctors. So this is a many to many relationship. So the alternative method of normalizing is more intuitive than the previous method we showed you. We'll use four steps to normalize. First of all, identify the tables. So we'll look for entities that we can put into tables. Then we give each table a primary key. We analyze the relationship between the tables. We link the tables using primary and foreign keys. We're going to look at a few examples. The car repair database. Um, this is just all about cars going for repairs. So if we identify the tables, the two things that are involved here are cars and repairs. So each table must represent an entity or a thing. And so the car table will be car, register, registration number and make. And in the repairs table, we'll have date and cost. Remember, these are relations. That's the way they've been um, noted here. And number two, we give each table a primary key. So in the car table, the registration number. And in the repairs table, the repair ID. We've added that field in as there was no field. You could not identify each record uniquely, either, either by the date or the cost. Um, now, we, step three, analyze the relationship between the tables. In our case, it's one to many because one car can have many repairs. If you check the other way around, can one repair, repair involve many cars? No, it cannot. So it is definitely one to many. Step four, we link the tables using primary and foreign keys. The table on the many side which is the repair side, gets the primary key of the table on the one side of the relationship. So we add that primary key into the table with the many side. The primary key that is added becomes the foreign key in the many table. So if you look at the, the one side, the primary key is registration number. It's the car table and registration number is the primary key. So we add registration number to the repairs table, you'll see it's at the end there, and it is now a foreign key in the repairs table. And our normalization is complete for this example. That's how the two tables look like with data in them. Another example is a CD database. We want to store data for lots of CDs, the title, the artist, and the list of all the songs. 
So if we identify the tables, we'll have unnormalized the CD. And in the brackets, title, artist name and songs is shown in curly brackets because it's a repeating group. You have lots of songs in each for each title and artist name. We could identify two tables now and split it into CD with title and artist name and songs with song name. We now give each table a primary key. So it will be CD with CD ID, title and artist name and songs with song ID and song name. If we analyze the relationship between the tables, we'll see that one CD can have many songs. We now link the tables using primary and foreign keys. The table on the many side gets the primary key of the table on the one side. That's the rule. And then the primary key that is added becomes the foreign key in the many table. So we take CDID, which is the primary key on the one side, and we pop it into the songs table, which is the many side. And then this example is now complete. And we'll do one more. Here's an unnormalized database, the recipe database. It's got a recipe ID, a name, and all the ingredients that belong to that recipe. As you can see, we have repeating groups here. Now, the relationship between the re recipes and the ingredients is a many-to-many -many relationship. For example, if you look at chocolate cake, chocolate brownie, sponge cake, all of these recipes, they have flour in them. So that's many-to-many. -many. Um, eggs belong to all the recipes nearly, and, and so on. If we want to identify the tables, we'll split it into two tables, which is recipe with recipe ID and recipe name, and ingredient with ingredient ID and ingredient name. There's another step involved here, as many-to-many -many relationships must now be changed into one-to-many relationships. So we have to add a third table. This will be the link table in the many-to-many -many relationship. So we'll add a table called recipe ingredients, and there'll be a one-to-many relationship between the recipes and recipe ingredients, and also between ingredients and recipe ingredients. We give each table a primary key. So for recipe, it's recipe ID, ingredient, ingredient ID. And in recipe ingredient, we have both of those fields and they are the primary key in, in a composite primary key, recipe ID and ingredient ID. If we look at the relationships between the tables, the combined keys of recipe ID and ingredients ID form the primary key in the recipe ingredient table. Each recipe is linked to all its ingredients and vice versa. So this is what it looks like. There are the three tables. And if you look at recipe ingredient, chocolate cake is recipe ID one, and we've got ingredients one, two, three, four, five, six, um, alongside recipe ID 1 to show that all six of those ingredients belong to that recipe. So just to finish off, here are the alternative method steps again. Number one, identify the different tables. Two, give each table a primary key. Three, analyze the relationship between the tables. And four, link the tables using primary and foreign keys.